looks like a couple of young guys have taken advantage of extra reps with your injury situation. Can you yeah. talk about the Woods and, and even Jakeem Graham? I can. I mean, we've had some guys take advantage of the opportunities that they've had here recently, and they've made the most of their opportunities. And that's what we told them on day one, is there's going to be a time where you're going to have an opportunity to go out there and show this team that we can trust you and you'll be dependable as an offensive player. And we've had a couple guys in Jakeem Grant and Mike Woods who have made the most of their opportunities. Um, and I think they made the most out of their opportunities because they work hard and they go out there and they perform and try to do the things that we ask them to do. So certainly that's been a very uh, positive thing for our offense that they've done that. Chad, is it fair to say Demetrius Felton is only a wide receiver right now? I mean, I just haven't seen him over with the running back. Before. Yeah, the, the value in Demetrius Felton is he's a football player and he can do multiple things for this offense. So although we've seen him thus far on the field as a receiver, we always have the uh, uh, the flexibility with Dimitri because he's got such a great skill set to bounce him around different positions. But uh, we've asked him to come in the building on a daily basis and wherever we put you, you make the most of your opportunities. And certainly he's he's done that as a receiver so far in camp. You talked about Jakeem Grant. Do you see some similarities with, with Dimitri and Jakeem or not? Yeah, I, I think that when you look at our receiver room, I think that there's a, a lot of different unique skill sets. And I think that Although, you know, you could look at similarities between Demetric and, and Jakeem, there's also differences. And I think that that's the great thing about our receiver room right now is we have enough guys that have strengths that are unique that they can bring that to our offense and help us win games. We know what happened in Schwartz last year when his rookie camp started slowly because of not being on the field. David Bell, can he catch up? To much of a setback of just not being out there for him. Yeah, I think any any time you're not on the field, uh, it presents a different type of challenge, but no different challenge than we have uh, when you're presented with other things. So I think that we do enough with him from a walkthrough standpoint. We're very uh, intense in the meeting room setting with him. So we spend as much time as we can to make sure we kind of close that gap to where he, when he does get on the field, that he's in a position to know the information and go out there and try to execute it. Obviously, we want as many players on the field as we can. If you're available to us, you have a chance to improve, but he certainly can improve, although not being out there. Yeah, I, I start with the non-physical traits with him. His, his character traits are very strong. Uh, he's got tremendous work ethic. Uh, he's very smart. He's mature. He's taken the coaching. Uh, certainly for a rookie, I think he's been very professional in his development. And then his skill set, it's been great to see him go out there with the opportunities that he's had here recently, make the, most of those opportunities because of his ability to play different positions. You know, we ask our players, if you can play in multiple roles, you increase our role for the team and you increase your chances of going out there and having individual success. And certainly he's done that because he has the position flexibility mentally to play multiple positions. He's made the most of his opportunities and it's been very positive with Mike Woods so far. It seems like DPJ has really taken an old, uh, a big step, you know, without Odell here and Jarvis uh, to be that second receiver. What, what's been that key for him? Yeah, I think Donovan, and I've said this over the, the last couple of years working with Donovan, he is such a, uh, uh, a great guy and he brings so much to the table as far as his work ethic and his, his leadership within the group. Um, he takes coaching very well. He tries to be detail oriented. He had a great off season this year working with our strength and conditioning staff, which I think does a tremendous job with our players in general. But they did a great job with Donovan of making sure that he was in ideal shape and strength in a physical condition to go out there and you know do the things that he can do for us. And he's also a guy that can play in multiple spots. And, been very pleased with Donovan this year so far. What do you think one more on, on him? He's really, when we talk to him, he, he gives very short answers. He's kind of reserved. How is he with you guys? Donovan's all about his business. Um, he's, he's very attentive in the meeting room. He's very serious about what he's trying to accomplish as an individual and most importantly as the team. Um, and I can't say enough about his work ethic but he's got a very serious demeanor, and I think it's a positive thing. I think he's very professional, and I think he'll only improve if he approaches it like he has so far in training camp. I can't come all this way without asking you about uh, what happened yesterday with the Dolphins. Uh, did Mary Joe White's team reach out to you about 2019 and talk to them, and were you surprised by the findings? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I to be honest with you, I have so much on my plate here with the Cleveland Browns uh, that my focus is just on the guys that I'm coaching. Certainly, we have a lot of challenges at our position right now. Uh, you know, with having some guys that have increased opportunity, I'm trying to get them ready, trying to do uh, the best job I can for the offense as a coach. So, all my focus is is truly been on this team and the players that I coach. Chad, in a situation like you're, you're in with three guys out. Does AB come to you and say, what do you think? Can you can you handle this or do we need someone? Do you consult with him? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that's been great to work with and within this organization is the ongoing communication that our personnel department led by AB has with our coaching staff. I think it's outstanding. There's not, we are on a daily basis talking to the personnel department and AB about where we see our roster and maybe what needs we may or may not have. So I think that's something that uh, we're very fortunate as a coaching staff here to have Andrew Barry, who's obviously he's a great listener. He's receptive to what we need as a coaching staff to move forward. And obviously injuries is is one thing that that, uh, you know, involves with, you know, that communication is so important. I what makes Amari such answer. a good route runner? And he specifically mentioned having success on double moves. Yeah, I think uh, Amari's had success over his career, and he's an accomplished route runner. And, and I think his success on double move type routes is because he runs the first route really well. So if you're a great speed out runner, and they have to honor and respect that, if you're good at that, then you should be able to complement that. And what I say is a punch and counter punch. So I think that's what's given him the ability to be a double route runner is that he can run that first route really well. What impact has he had within that room and, and on that uh, receiver group? He just he doesn't seem to be a, a flashy type of personality or flashy guy. He just kind of goes about his business. But just from your perspective, what impact has he had on? on yeah, that? Amari Cooper's had an impact without saying a word, and and that's how I think it really to sum it up best. He goes about his business every day. He uh, works extremely hard. He is a great example to not only our young players in the receiver room, but to our team and and I really respect and admire the way he works every day certainly I have watched him from afar for several years and always uh, loved him as a receiver and now that I've had a chance to work with the individual it's been awesome and can't again say enough great things about Amari Cooper and what he's brought not only to our receiver group but to the team Right. With Martin, you're probably, you're probably like holding your breath on that. But uh, can you just address what you've gone through this camp with all of that? Yeah, and, and when I when I step in front of the group and we have our meetings, when I talk about challenges, we kind of talk about opportunities. We flip flip that word, and truly, it is an opportunity for some of these other guys to show us what they have. And uh, although it might be a setback for the individual that suffers the injury for whether it's short term or long term, what a great opportunity that is for guys like Mike Woods, um, Mike Harley, some of these young rookies to get an opportunity to go out there and show us that all the work we've done in the meetings and we've had on the field individually now can go into a huddle and they can, again, show us that they deserve to be here as a Cleveland Brown. Yeah, I think it's a great question, and it's something that I think is important for a great offense. If you have different types of skill sets that they bring to your offense, uh, you know, I, I think that's critical to success. And it doesn't always have to be big, small. It could be quick, fast, or, or you know, using play strength. But when you have a unique skill set that you can bring to the table, and I think everybody's different, I think that only adds value to your team. I know David hasn't been out here, obviously, for camp yet, but through the voluntary portion of the offseason, we saw him get those slot reps. I know he did that a little bit in college, but just how has he been kind of like adjusting and, and learning that spot for you guys? Yeah, I think he's he's adjusted. David's adjusted like all rookies have. It's, it's tough, and they have a lot to learn, and they have a long way to go. And certainly, we ask them to try to learn this conceptually, not to try to just learn, I'm only a slot, I'm only an outside guy, which we don't know where he is. It's wherever he proves that he has value for our team. But to be able to prove that, you need to learn it all. So we want him to take the big picture of the play, to understand everything about each spot, and then we'll plug and play you where we think you're best for the team. Some of the guys we talked to are a lot more subdued than we're probably used to 
Yeah, so I think that one of the awesome things about being an NFL coach, especially a position coach, is every year the dynamics of the room is different. You know, so, some years you have some guys that are boisterous and maybe loud and you need to be a school teacher and tell them, hey guys, quiet down, right? And then there's other years where you can't get the guys to say anything and it might be your job and your responsibility as the teacher to make sure that we have some communication going in, in the room. So. I respect all the personalities, whether you're loud or quiet. I certainly love the guys I'm coaching, uh, but I would describe this group as very quiet and just going on about your business, and, and that's not always a bad thing. Okay. Okay. Along, those lines, oh, along those lines, with, with Jarvis is such a big leader for you. With him gone, do you think you have the player leadership you need in your room? Yeah, and you know, I've always kind of looked at leadership as it doesn't have to come from necessarily one person. The leadership can come from several different people. So it's interesting right now to see who comes to the forefront in that leadership. Uh, surely Amari has provided leadership because he's a veteran presence and he's been an accomplished player. Um, he's not going to say much of anything, but you can lead by example. And certainly I think he's one that we've looked at and said he's been a great leader and it's been by example. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought him up. I mean, I, I'm not standing in front of uh, you guys right now. This is my 20th year in the NFL if it wasn't for Dick Vermeil. And I'm so proud of him and his accomplishment that he's going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And there's so many lessons I learned as a coach. I would say the foundation of what I am as a coach is probably a lot of what he was and, and what he taught me. And the one thing that, that I'll always cherish that I learned from him is the importance of the relationships of the players and the coaches and how important that is and how special that is. And he's somebody I learned a great deal uh, from. I've learned loyalty. I learned uh, how to operate about your business and work very extremely hard. There's a great story. I was a special teams assistant when I was working for him and working with the linebackers. And it's when we were still on the paper photocopies. We weren't on the iPads like we are now. And we had a copy jam and he was a very hard worker. He'd be there all hours of the night. And him and I were the only two in the building. It was one o'clock in the morning and I was trying to fix a paper jam. I was on my knees. He walked past me, said, what's going on here? I was actually kicking the machine. He told me to, to calm down and have some poise. He got down on his knees and he fixed that copy jam with me and to me that's always something that has stuck with me of how humble of a leader he was uh, what a great worker and what a great mentor he's been I still stay in communication with him quite often and I, I mean I get goosebumps thinking about his honor that he's going to receive this weekend in the Hall of Fame.